Good morning, everyone. We are in Acts chapter 8, verse 26, through chapter 9 and verse 43. And as we pick up in verse 26 of chapter 8 today, we read, Philip is taken by the Holy Spirit uh, to a chariot that had just left Jerusalem. And inside was an Ethiopian eunuch who was reading the book of Isaiah. In particular, he was reading Isaiah 53, which speaks of the Messiah. And Philip asked the man if he knew what he read, and the man replies, How could I know unless someone explained it to me? There are people out there just waiting for you or for me to come to them and to explain the message of salvation to them. And Philip explains to him that when it talks about this Messiah dying and being led as a lamb to the slaughter, it was speaking of Jesus. It says here that Philip preached unto him Jesus. Philip preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came to water and the man asked why he couldn't be baptized. And Philip asked him if he believed with all of his heart. And the man replied, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And Philip took the man down into the water and he baptized him there. Then just like that, Philip was gone. But the eunuch left rejoicing. Philip was gone, but the Lord remained with that eunuch. You see, once the Lord comes into your heart, he stays forever. In chapter 9, it reveals that Saul was still hunting Christians. He got a letter from the high priest to go to Damascus to the synagogues so that he could capture any Christians that might be there. On the way to Damascus, a bright light shone from heaven, and Saul fell off his horse to the ground. And a voice said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And Saul asked, Who are you? And the voice said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. And Saul was terrified, and he asked the Lord uh, what he wanted him to do. And Jesus told him to go into the city. Saul was led into the city because he could not see. And he was in that city for three days without sight. And it says that he wouldn't eat or drink anything. Ananias was a disciple who lived in Damascus and the Lord told him to go and to find Saul and Ananias was hesitant at first as you and I probably would be too because he had heard that Saul was killing Christians and Jesus told Ananias to go anyway because Saul was changed. Ananias went and not only healed Saul's eyes but he also baptized him. Saul was then found teaching and preaching in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. They then desired to kill Saul. So the disciples let him down the city wall in a basket in the middle of the night. Saul traveled back to Jerusalem, a changed man, a completely different person. And he came to Jerusalem, but they're still afraid of him. But Barnabas took him and he told the, the apostles that he believed him. And after this, we find him with the other disciples. And Saul went and preached about Jesus all around Jerusalem. We then find a, a change of direction in the, in the narrative of the book of Acts. In verse number 32, it switches back to Peter. And Peter goes to Lydda and heals a man who was sick of the palsy for eight years. And Peter heals him and then preaches Jesus to them and the entire town, along with a neighboring town, believe. There was a woman named Dorcas in Joppa, and she had died, and so they called for Peter. And Peter goes and enters where she laid, and he prays to God. He then turned to the body and he said, Arise, and she opened her eyes. Many people believed on the Lord after this. Peter remained in Joppa many days, and he stayed with a man named Simon, who was a tanner. Psalm 130 through 132. In Psalm 130, it's a prayer for mercy upon the people of God. The psalmist cries out to God and asks him to forgive because he knows that God is a forgiving God. The psalmist ends this psalm with calling Israel to hope in the Lord because he is full of mercy and pardon for the sinner. Psalm 131 is from David. 
And he speaks of his hope and trust in the Lord. And so let me just read it to you because it's only three verses long. It says, Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor mine eyes lofty. Neither do I exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me. Surely I have behaved and quieted myself as a child that is weaned of his mother. My soul is even as a weaned child. Let Israel hope in the Lord from henceforth forever. Psalm 132, it opens with saying, Lord, remember David. And this is what this psalm is all about. What's interesting is that God does not forget anything. We know that. It was not actually the Lord that needed a reminder, but the people. This psalm is about the covenant that God made with David and that the Messiah would appear in Zion. Guess what? God didn't forget. The Messiah did come and his name is Jesus Christ. He came and died upon a cross. He was buried and he rose three days later and he is alive forever. You can have him in your heart if you true, truly trust in him as your savior and you accept him. Proverbs 17, two to six, Proverbs 17, two to six. Uh, in verse two, we see that sometimes a servant who is wise will receive an inheritance in place of a son who is rebellious and acts foolishly. In verse three, silver and gold are purified under intense heat. And the heart of man is purified by God. Now, remember, the Bible declares that our God is a consuming fire. And so God, that fire, he purifies the heart of man. Verse 4, we see that the wicked and those who lie will listen to other liars. They're all in it together. Verse number 5, uh, making fun of the poor is like making fun of God. God is the one who made them, and he also cares for them. Remember, they're made in the likeness or the image of God. So make fun of them, you're making fun of God. And finally, verse 6 it is a verse that speaks of grandparents. The grandchildren are their crown, it says. So just think about how they get to spoil their grandkids. Uh, it is a testimony to the great God we have and the continuance of life. And so praise God for grandparents uh, and grandparents, praise God for your grandchildren. Let's bow our heads. I wonderful God, we thank you. We uh, Just help us, Lord, through this week. Help us to focus upon you, to meditate upon your word, to be obedient unto the things that you have called us to do. And God, help us to shine for others that are around us, uh, to reflect Jesus to, to all that are around. We ask these things in his name. Amen.